Hi, um, my name is Dennis Holland. I live in Newport Beach, California, and I'm restoring the Shawnee, which is uh, she was built originally as a 72-foot catch, and I'm going to plan to uh, restore her as a as a staysail schooner, so she'll compete more in, in vintage racing boats. It's a, a picture of her sailing on San Francisco Bay in 1918, and this is Serena the famous schooner Serena that was, they were built side by side the same year. You can see some of the check marks in the keel the way she's drying out. The idea of, of an old boat like this is to get all the moisture out of her before you start putting oil back in her. But the idea thing is that once you get the wood nice and bone dry, you can start penetrating it with linseed and, and uh, oil, different oils mixtures to go in there and bring it back again. You can see how the the planking, the water's falling off the, I mean, the paint's falling off the planking right here. That's because this is the engine room and it was saturated with oil in the wood. So, and the planking's staying nice and tight because it's, it's long leaf yellow pine and it'll stay really nice. So, again, what we'll do is we'll scrape the hull. We won't, have, we won't sand the hull, but we'll scrape the paint and use a uh, paint gun on it. Kind of make it hot so it'll fall off and then we'll re oil it too try to preserve as much of the planking as we can. You can see down in this area, this is her hourglass shape here. This is what just gives her her beauty. You know, she comes down and comes out, and then the ballast down at the bottom is lead, and it weighs 37,000 pounds, and it's two foot wide at the bottom, and it's flat. So she wants to sit on her keel. So it's, that's one of the pleasures, too. This is her ground plate. In the old days, they had to have a ground plate for all electrical, for so they, in case they're hit by electrical, by uh, like an electrical storm or for the radio and so on. So I don't know what I'm going to find underneath that. But it, it'll probably be really nice. You, you never know. This is an old mast I picked up and I'm saving it. It's Douglas fir. It'll make a great new bowsprit. Yeah, this is a 1905 bandsaw and I picked it up when I was building the Pilgrim and used it to cut timbers and I'll be putting it back together here as, as soon as the, the Jeep's out of the way. and. Have it outside and we cut the timbers and the planking and everything. It's really nice. It's low RPMs. These bit wheels start spinning. It's really nice. It's, it's a beautiful piece of wood. And see how the rust stays in the hole like that? You just knock that out and it's really neat. I'll put this in a, a tub of oil and it'll all come back together. And reuse it. It's amazing. It's not rotten. It's just it's a beautiful piece of wood. Actually, my Hershoff boat came off the Tiger on Roga and when I served my apprenticeship, we were remodeling her for the customers, and they threw that boat in the dumpster. So I took the boat out of the dumpster and put it in my truck, and, they, and the boss came along and he said, you want that boat? And I said, yeah. He goes, well, it's, is it worth a week's pay to you? And I go, I guess. <laughs> so he got it out of me, so anyway, it was still worth it. You know, I started doing exploring here because this is my suspicion to me is the worst part of her hull because all the rainwater and fresh water leaked down in this area. And it's sure right, a lot of the frames here are really bad. So I feel like I'm going to have to replace probably half the frames in the boat. Over a period of years, she was slowly turned into a, like a floating condominium or houseboat. And a lot of plywood and fiberglass laid on the decks and things, and a lot of her beauty was covered up. So I've been taking all that off and digging through her and just in the process of removing tanks and cleaning her up. I put in these tie rods here because she started spreading. When I brought her in here, I blocked her up and built a cradle on her to keep her perfectly level so she'd dry out true and straight. And then I put tie rods in her to keep her from actually spreading because there's no strength really in her deck. The house is so big that there's a lot of the strength in there. But you can imagine, I, when I first came down here, I, I see, the second time I was on board Shawnee was in about 1971 or 72. I walked down the stairway and it's gorgeous. And then when I walked down her just almost four years ago, I couldn't, I couldn't believe the difference. So that's, I keep remembering how she was. But you can see some of her frames in here are really beautiful. They just need to be cleaned out. And, so I'll be taking off the, the garboard and the broad planks, and that's when I rebolt all the keel and clean it up. And That's almost 100 years of 
dirt and grime and grease and you never know, we might find some old coins down there that got some value to them. In the Navy, when they took over the boat, they painted everything white. You see on the inside, you can see all the beautiful teak. It's gorgeous, just really nice stuff. So, so we'll carefully take all these out and strip them and put them back in. You can see all the buckets of water. I keep everything full of water so that on hot days and stuff, the humidity stays in the boat, so it doesn't dry out too badly. Some of these beams I'm going to be able to save, but not, not all. Like this one's rotted off at the very end. It's just, it's gone. That's what's exciting, though. It's, and then you can tell the original mast rotted away, so they put a, a newer mast in. They cut it all out like this, and it <laughs> cut down the very max, and it's it's just awful. So, you know, it would have been easier to me to put the original mast back in, make a new one. This boat was nicknamed the Honeymoon Boat because Mark Fontana used it for his honeymoon. And that's why it has one stateroom. This is the stateroom. It has two different, two two bunks in it. They're all they're pretty good sized bunks. You could call them two doubles if you're <laughs> cozy. But uh, it's got a nice chest of drawers in here, and it's also got these buttons. They used to push these buttons for uh, their crew to come back and make them drinks or if they wanted anything. So, because the, the crew was there's like not only just sailing crew, but they were like stewards and cooks and so on. And th this was the only head below decks. Right here is the big head, and it was. It's a. Uh, I, I just I was just having a flashback. I, I just remembered how it was how it was, you know. <laughs> almost what? Fifty years ago now. Amazing. I always trained my kids, brought them up to know Sunday's a family day, so we always do things on Sunday's a family. But when I was building a pilgrimite I just kind of disciplined myself to work, you know, 40 hours a week on her. So if I worked another job, I had to make up for it in the evenings and Saturdays. So it worked out okay. And I'll do the same thing on this boat. I get guilty feeling if I don't uh, accomplish something every day. I have to, have to do that. I forget what it's all about. Really nice. You would think that below the wireline, everything would be worse, but it's really not. It's really nice. <laughs>